And really this goes back to the five ages of man in Greek mythology by Hesiod. And in these five ages of man, written supposedly in 750 BC or something, we are told of these five ages. And what's interesting, and what is exactly what we come to find in this research, is the older the ruins, the more glorious. We can go back to what we would call a hundred, two hundred years ago, and everything is super impressive, and yet this is the last age. And this is the age in which this author finds himself. He is in the last age, Hesiod. In this age, humans live in toil and misery. So he finds himself in this reset situation, at the end of the chain, similar to us. We weren't even in the Iron Age, we're like in the Plastic Age. Maybe Silicon, if I was being a little nicer. The Oil Age. And most certainly the Disposable Age. If a force like we see in the past was to come through our neighborhoods, towns and cities, there would be nothing left. There are few buildings that would remain. Especially in some sort of plasma electrical, or microwave scenario. Again, wood and trees seem to fare okay, and things made of metal turn to ash. And oftentimes I think that's why we see holes in a lot of the ruins. What look like bored holes actually had metal rebar running through them, and the rebar just got cooked out, or whatever metallic substance it was, whatever shape it had, it's cooked out and leaves an impression, kind of a tech fossil behind. In this era, again this Iron Age, which sounds exactly like our age, children dishonor parents, siblings fight with siblings, all essentially e etiquette is lost. Might makes right, as you can see, are the biggest part of our budget is defense, as far as America is concerned. Humans no longer feel shame when doing wrong. Babies will be born with gray hair. The gods forsake humanity and there will be no help against evil. Here's a depiction of the Iron Age. So again, the worst age, the end of the ages. Men killing each other in the presence of castles. In the presence of the Golden Age. In the shadow of the Golden Age. Killing each other. And I would say we're still there. Nothing has changed. Thanks for being here, and welcome. Okay, I'm recording. I don't know if it's just me, but my animals don't like when I'm on the computer or on the phone, and I trust them. And I don't want to make a big deal about it. I think we've all grown pretty comfortable with what we've discovered. And I can't tell in real time how far this realization has spread, but I can tell on the internet it's growing. And is all of this abandoned? Is all of this older than America? The America and the history that we've been given Today I started looking into South Carolina, one of the supposed earliest developments or settlements in America. One of them. But really, when I look at it, I see what I see everywhere. In San Francisco, Salt Lake City, everywhere. Just the same, there's nothing unusual about it. Although it is very unusual. I used to have some friends from South Carolina, and we could have played Where Are We? And you wouldn't have guessed in this picture. But maybe if I would have shown some tobacco fields. Someone wearing overalls. I don't know. I really don't know. This is not what I would have thought of as being South Carolina. I mean, when my friends told me back in high school were from South Carolina with a very thick accent. I didn't imagine this. I mean, they might have lived up here on this third floor. And yet I imagine them coming from... The country, but yet a very gracious people. And I found this about the South. Amazing, gracious mannerisms. Very polite and seeming to be caring as a people. Cordial. 
Here we see Beaufort, 1862. 1862. An old boat, looking like this used to be waterfront with these piers. And just a mess, everybody in the mud. Again, 1862, erecting a pontoon bridge across the Port Royal River. So here we go, they're building a bridge. And I could believe them building this stupid bridge. A pontoon bridge, basically a floating bridge. An unimpressive bridge. Everybody is so weird in these old photos. So out of place, like they just woke up out of a dream. And here we can see some modern looking building, or at least a building that these people should be able to build. Would build. This guy says, What are you guys doing sitting in that cotton? Oh, we like sitting in the cotton. Very well. This guy's thinking, Sure is hot today. I think I'm gonna lay down in that cotton. And here's a Civil War 1863 Morris Island encampment. Here we go, taking a break from the Civil War. You see anyone coming, boss? No. I haven't seen anyone for days. Boss, do we need to keep shoveling? Shouldn't we start making some food? I haven't eaten in days. Oh, showered. No. Keep shoveling. We're fixing to have us a war here. I'm looking out here in the wilderness. The infinite wilderness. What are we defending? Who are we really fighting here? This guy says, You got another rolling paper? Nah. Ran out last week. There's gotta be a store out here somewhere. And what the hell is out here? And what are they really doing? An unidentified camp. Here we go. This is a fine camp. Probably took them a week this together. A little teepee. 1863, Civil War. Boss, what are we doing here? Shut up and stand still. We're posing for this picture. Boss, can I get a new shirt? Mine seems a little tight. Here a... Flag raising ceremony, 1865. Bunch of people just sitting in the dirt. Some strange columns back here. And quite a crowd. Is it this pole here, this tech, that they've put a flag on? They couldn't fit it in the picture? Or is it up here? Did they just put a little flag up here? This guy's thinking, what are we doing here? I don't know, they're supposed to give out free food after they raise this flag. Here, 1889, earthquake damage in Charleston. The old Roper Hospital. Ah, the old Roper Hospital. 1880 to 1895. Here we go. Just looking so old already. And I like this because these are pretty old photos here. Mud streets and everything abandoned. Today, these units might cost half a million dollars a piece. Just a little unit. Back then, they didn't know what to do with all this. Here, somebody has put the J Palace and Saloon. Here, we see ruins in 1865. These are my favorite. Columbia, 1865 ruins seen from the State House. Here we go. Now, did this happen from shooting cannonballs? Or a massive firestorm bomb from above. All the characteristics of Hiroshima or Dresden. But this is the old world. And I mean, it really looks like it's been burnt, bombed. And this is a view from the Capitol or the State House. I'm not sure if it's this one, but this is the one in Charleston. And I think somebody has just put a wood fence around it to inherit the state house and these large blocks are the ruins from the state house behind us but we see trees whatever did this should have taken out all the trees too this tells me the destruction happened either before the trees or these trees have been penciled in or this is some sort of microwave plasmatic outpouring Similar to the fires, the wild or not so wild fires of everywhere, especially California, where we see entire neighborhoods looking like this, even worse, and then all the trees, perfectly okay. And maybe that's what we're seeing here, because a microwave or some other destructive force 
would not disrupt vegetation or wood strangely columbia the old market built after 1865 and raised in 1913 built after like they just have to tell us that no actually i think it was built before i'm just gonna disagree with this i think it didn't look like this and they've added this roof to make it functional again and what do you think how old is something like this georgetown date unknown date unknown well at least they're being honest what a beautiful little downtown for these primitive ass people a drugstore? I mean, this is a great example. You could not build just this building with all these people and all these horse and wagons and carriages. Worthless. Can't put a load on this cart. Look how flimsy these are. Made for pulling a few people, but not a pallet of bricks. You would need ten times a pallet of bricks just to get going on one of these buildings. And it's just not happening. Not on these dirt roads. Look at these roads. And look at the growth of the trees again. I mean, this is an early picture. 1900. I mean, somebody established this road and this sidewalk and these trees. Somehow somebody watered them, at least initially. And now this, this is what we have. North Carolina Greenville, teched out to the T in 1902, Main Street. And trolleys, electric trolleys. Here's a bird's eye view of Charleston, South Carolina in 1872. Again, pre-power tools, modern machinery, and everything is perfect, beyond perfect. They're doing things that we can't do without power. And what does this look like if we were to zoom in here? Super beautiful and exactly what we see everywhere throughout the realm. Here's a little mini cathedral. And what have we done in this town? Still, to this day, the original brick. Just painting things, greens and pinks, like some Caribbean island. And here she is, nothing has changed. Golden age material, just sitting here, complete with tech. Nothing has changed from the old photos we see. They've just paved all the streets and painted everything. And a gorgeous city. I would love to live in the golden age, in the actual age in which all of this was actually built and appreciated. Here I was reading earlier, this stuff was finally appreciated in 1960, and they began the Historical Society campaign. And here we see a picture of 1865 Charleston. Here we go. Does this look like a city that's being built, or like the Old West that is being claimed? You'll note in this picture, it actually looks like a picture turned into a painting, that there has been no traffic on this street. No ruts in the road, and I have no doubt there's brick under here. These are probably brick streets. I think I see some poking up right here. But just an absolute mess. And of course we know from doing this research throughout the years that this is nothing. This is just the top. When they begin to excavate, digging up these streets, either to do modern sewer repairs or other utilities, what they find is entire buildings underground. And I'm sometimes afraid that I and a large part of this community is kind of jaded by now. This has all become so normal to us. But if you don't know, there are cities under these cities. Look into any city and the underground history. And what we see is brick buildings underground. Something that you would never do. You would never build brick underground level. It's very porous and starts to turn to powder when it's at ground level and exposed to water, moisture. And so one part of this research is just looking at everything above. But when we start to find all of this underground as well, there is no greater proof needed that there was a catastrophic reset throughout the realm. One, two, three floors buried, realm-wide, hearkening to Noah's Flood. But the idea is that Noah's Flood may not have been that long ago. And the story of the Five Ages of Man may not have been that long ago. And there is undoubtedly a gap in our history. 
and we collectively have amnesia. And it is my personal belief that a large faction of even the controllers suffer from this amnesia. Is this building being built, really? Or is it being repaired? Look at these columns out in front. Who is creating these columns? And now they're in ruins. Again, little Greece here. But the truth is, this is little America. Little America in ruins. And I've said it before, but I've always wanted to travel and see ruins around the world. And now I would still like to, but I think it's more important that I see the ruins in my own country. I've never seen this before. Never. Look at this massive housing project back here. Massive. Seems to have survived. Whatever took all this out. And that was the ruins of a circular church on Meeting Street, 1865. Here's a look at the same angle that we saw beautifully restored. It looks like the brick streets have buckled, causing a little blowout. And it looks like there's been some fudgery here. This baby looks like it's been penciled in, starting at about this point. Maybe this point. I'm not sure. And here's some classic ruins that kind of I've always attributed to a cemetery, which now I know is stupid. Cemeteries are undoubtedly a cover-up used to help sell the narrative. I'm not saying that there's not some people buried in them, just that there's a lot more to it. So I'm going to cut it short and maybe pop back in for something totally different. So these are just things that I want to check out in Salt Lake. West High is making plans to remodel and rebuild. So I'm going to get out here and take a bunch of pictures of it. This was an old School Buildings of Salt Lake page on Facebook. And it was really good, actually. It really led me to a lot of finds that I otherwise would have missed. Salt Lake might be one of the best Castle High School states. But all states have Castle High Schools that are just absolutely ridiculous. And in my last video, I had all my high schools confused. All the castles. The first one I went to was actually Highland. And I thought it was East, but this is East. And when I lived in Salt Lake, East still was a castle. Now they've totally dumbed it down. And here she is in ruins. Just ruins. Love it. Here again, another angle. A quick digression back to Charleston. This is called Slave Mart. That's right, Slave Mart. I was going to talk about it, but I got off track. And I recently found where they're hiding South High. Old South High. How interesting, I just punched in South High School. And they've shown me East High over here but with a description. The secret tunnels of East High School. The secret tunnels. Anyway, digression. In short, South High is now the community college. It's Salt Lake Community College. Let me just punch that in. And they really do make it difficult for us. Everything renamed and shuffled. And this picture sucks. I'll put a better one in for the final edit. But this is it. And we can look at old photos and it was much more impressive. But even what's sitting there today is pretty mind-blowing. The detail, the ornamentation. And lastly, how much does it cost to build a mile of road? I've been working on my road for 15 years, just by myself. I mean, sometimes I rent a little skid steer and work on it and dump loads of rock. And it's still worthless. I mean, it's still not a nice road. It still needs a lot of work. And the thing is with a road is everywhere, all roads, is you need to build them up. You need to build them up a few degrees. Depending on the landscape, you need the water to run off. You can't just plow a road through, like I did, essentially. That's the cheap way to do it. You plow a road through, and then you put gravel on top of it. But the first time you drive over it, when it's wet, it's just going to start sinking, and you're going to sink. You need to apply ten layers of gravel, and eventually some asphalt. Or if you have the money to spend, concrete, which is way too cost prohibitive. 
In short, a road these days per mile cost two to three million dollars. Two to three million per mile. I told you I'm wanting to build a city, or at least a neighborhood, a small community, at the very least, on my land, and I have about a quarter mile of road. And the county told me I would need to pave the road, my quarter mile. So you can see here, according to these figures, a lot more than I think is even worth investing in my land. So that's it. I'm going to talk some more about this in another video, but for now, I thank you all for joining me. I love you all. Do have a blessed day, and I'll see you next week.